Hey guys, Dylan here from Iceberg TV. Today I've got the brand new stock Halo Wraith. We'll be comparing it to my most old and most beat up destroyer, so Proto Destroyer. We'll be comparing it to the newest run of stock Wraith. We're here at Hornet's Nest. Just gonna throw some shots and see how these two compare. Nice and beefy on a slight hyzer, slight nose up there. Destroyer definitely had a little more push to it. So I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that have the same question I have. And the question today is how does a beat up destroyer compare to a new Wraith? Uh, most people that I play with bag the destroyer or the Wraith. There's not a lot of people, at least that I play with, that bag both. So I'm super curious, how exactly does a new stock Wraith compare to that old beaten destroyer, your most favorite destroyer? So the goal today is to find out, at least for me, how this guy compares to my oldest, favorite, most beaten destroyer. This, is a, this thing is so old. And this one is so new. Let's see how they fly in a flex forehand line. Oh yeah. That's got a nice bit of stability on it. Actually, a little bit more than I thought it was going to have. Oh, that's going to swing right up to the pin. Nice. I should have broken out my KC Pro EVR for this video. We're just going to use the Pixel because that's what I've been using. And it's been going pretty well with the Pixel over the last couple months. But so far, Proto Destroyer is the winner. All right, hole nine, we've got a 312 foot par three. We're gonna do a nice little half swing here and see if we can get a nice overstable flex backhand. And that's what it's gonna fly like if you don't throw far. I'm trying to throw it only like 300 feet. It was really, really stable. Skip in there. Oh, that was a cool shot. So you can clearly see if you beat up a destroyer for long enough, it will eventually, even at slower arm speeds, find a way to get a little bit of stand up for you. Now, pros on tour don't really want their destroyers to fly like this, but basically anybody who's not a touring pro, it's amazing, even though the flight numbers of the Wraith and its slightly slower speed, you would think the destroyer would be way more stable, but we're really getting a chance to see here how wear and tear of a disc over time does eventually affect the flight. That Proto Destroyer, I'm sure when it was brand new, was an absolute beefcake. But now again, even on a 300 foot hole where I'm throwing it really gentle, you saw just a touch of stand up there, um, which I find really interesting how um, the disc loses a little bit of grams over time. It gets a little bit lighter. Also, the bottom of the disc starts to get scuffed, so it doesn't have its original um, bottom shape that it had when it was brand new. And that really starts to affect its flight over time, which I personally find super interesting. The Wraith was about 50 feet straight into the woods. The Destroyer puts us in the circle for another look at Birdie. Boom. So far, the Destroyer is winning this battle, but I suspect on some of the forehand holes where I really need to do some big flex lines, this Wraith is going to come in clutch when this destroyer is not gonna be quite stable enough for the line. And hole 10 here is gonna be a perfect example where I think the Wraith actually has a slight advantage here. We need to go on the outside of the first set of trees, but then inside of the second set of trees and then have it fade way to the right towards the basket. So we'll throw the destroyer here and then we'll throw the Wraith trying to hit that nice flex forehand line. Oh, wait a minute. Do I need to bag that Proto Destroyer again? That was an insanely good shot. This is one of the toughest par threes on the course. All right, Halo Wraith. Oh, I didn't want to flex nearly as hard. All right, this is a hole that I've never ab actually parked before. I think that Destroyer line was probably the best shot I've ever had on this super tough par three. Again, one of the hardest holes on the course, so that destroyer is parked, I'm going to be absolutely pumped. This is by far my best drive ever on this hole. It's not absolutely parked, but to have an inside the circle putt on this hole is absolutely wonderful. Come on, putter's flying nice today. That is another fire shot with the destroyer. 
Hole 11, another pretty tough par three. So far, I've not done the Halo Wraith justice. This is a great hole for both of these discs for me. It's gonna clock in just over 300 feet, slightly uphill. Just need to hit this flexing line right through that center gap. Come on, oh man, that thing really starts breaking left pretty early for me on backhand. Gonna need the destroyer to save the day again. Yep. Go in the basket, skip. <sighs> that destroyer is filleting every line today. My history with the Innova Wraith has always been more so to the Echo Star Wraiths, which are a little bit less stable um, than the Star and the Halo. I did also have for a while a baby blue and white teal factory second Halo Wraith, and that one was a lot straighter out of the box as well. Um, so far for me, this new Wraith is an absolute beef dog. I had this happen the other day with that flippy factory second Firebird, where I just went an entire round and parked every single hole with that one disc. So far, this is shaping up to be one of those magical rounds, but instead of the flippy Firebird is the Proto Star Destroyer. Hole 12 might be the longest hole of the day. It is a super long 810 foot par five. Um, the pros play it as a par four. We're going to do two big flex forehand lines. I feel like that's how I can personally stretch out the most distance on this shot shape. We're gonna U-disc measure them and actually confirm exactly how much distance we're getting here with each disc. See, here's where the Wraith may come in clutch. Didn't quite have the stability to swing out at the end. As to where that Wraith is gonna be absolutely huge on that line. And if that's not 400 feet, and my name isn't Iceberg TV. All right, I just retrieved the destroyer from the woods. It was about 300 feet. It's probably 80 feet back in the woods there after that sort of overturned. I measured this guy right about 420 feet. The T pad is super far down there. And this is actually a really awesome drive on this hole. So let's see if we can get up and down for the birdie. Ideally, this is a pretty simple shot here. We're gonna go right back to the Wraith here. Thing absolutely bombs on a, like a, a stable flex ante line for me. Now we just have like a little baby hyzer into the gap. That should be ideal. I think that's perfect, but you never really know on this hole. You think you pured it and then you're sawed off left or right. And if you guys have never played Hornet's Nest, I was just up and around the corner left over there. So you come through this tree line here and then you're shooting down this absolutely beautiful gap towards the basket right there. Man, this is a fun hole. And as I said just a moment ago, you think you pure it and then you're sawed off slightly to the right or to the left and all of a sudden you got absolutely nothing. Let's see if we can't get the world's sneakiest flex up to the pin. All right, we're going to have a putt. Get up there. Ooh, this is sneaky. But we are parked for yet another birdie. This time it is, in fact, with the Halo Wraith. I know for a long time, Innova has kind of been the top dog and in most players' bags, but we've definitely seen a huge shift, in my opinion, where the perception is that MVP makes the best discs. And because of Simon Lazat, a lot of people want to bag MVP. Because of Paul McBeth, a lot of people want to bag Discraft. A lot of people don't have Innova in their bags anymore. I'm curious, do you bag any Innova discs? And if you do, what are you guys bagging? I really want to know. Comment below. Hole 15, the dreaded gauntlet. We only have a few holes left today. Man, it would feel good to put one of these up there. This is not a hole most people get very often. Yeah, that's gonna be too stable for the backhand line. We actually hit the gap with immense success, but we can't get up there with the backhand with this stable disc, so we need to get a sneaky forehand up there. Come on, the, the hyzer flip makes sense. The flex line doesn't make sense. Almost an impossible shot. All right, everybody knows new hole 18 at Hornet's Nest is absolute butt cheeks. 
So with that being said, we are going to finish off on hole 17, which we're about to play. Then I'll give you guys my full recap on new Halo Wraith versus old beat up Proto Star Destroyer. Um, if you wanna check out any disc golf discs, go check out my sponsor, Power Grip USA. Use my discount code Iceberg10, it'll save you 10% on anything over at the website. Or if you're interested in the best disc golf bag in the game, has never not once let me down. Use my code ICE20 over at bergsdisksports.com. That'll save you 20% on any disc golf bag over at the website. This is my last chance to throw a good shot with the Halo Wraith. Come on. <clears throat> there it is. Although we hit the tree, that was probably my best Wraith pull of the day. I'm not great at putting it up in the air with a little bit of Anheuser like that. It's like one of my worst shots. I do best with like flat or slight hyzer. <clears throat> More like slight hyzy like that. That's gonna be a nice shot. That's gonna get us way up the hill. Give you guys a nice glance of the side profiles here. As you can see, they are extremely similar. Rim width, the Wraith coming in. Again, very similar. But I do think the Wraith has a little bit more concave aggression under the wing here. This destroyer is particularly convex more so than most. So I thought this would be a really fun video to compare the super beat up Star Destroyer, the people's favorite distance driver, versus the new Halo Wraith to see how it stacks up. The new Halo Wraith, very, very stable. If you don't throw 65 miles an hour or more, you're not going to get a proper flight out of this disc. But if you have the arm for it and you haven't been able to throw rates in the past because you just feel like they're not quite dependable in the wind, you play a lot of open courses, you need something with a little more oomph to it, this thing is going to hold up for you. It's a really nice run of Wraith, particularly for me. You guys saw I threw a 420-ish foot flex forehand with this guy and it did not really want to hold the turn all that long. It really wanted to fight out the whole way. Again, 420 feet is not that impressive. Um, but as far as amateur players go, I don't think there's a lot of amateur players throwing 420, especially on forehand. And you could see this had plenty of stability on the Anheuser line to fully come back to the end of the flight. Um, so that's where the stability is. If you throw slower than 60, it's going to be super beef. If you throw faster than 65, it's going to be an absolute bomber for you. And you're going to absolutely fall in love with this disc. Anyway, live with gratitude. Be kind. I'll see you guys in the next video and take care.